or geological or structural report. Um, you know, any issues that fall within that, you know, you're highly recommended to seek the appropriate individual. That's fine, but it's boilerplate. Um, and as a fiduciary, a lot of courts will say you have the, ob the obligation to go beyond just the boilerplate that might be stated in a home inspection report and actually discuss this and nail the issue down with your buyer. Um, yes? Um, Two part question. First off, what do you do when you walk into a really clean property that doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't have a, a lot of glaring red flags? And, and more specifically, what do you do if you walk into a bedroom of a newly constructed house with perfectly laid carpeting, not a nick or a scratch on a wall, not even a dirty window? What what do you write on the form, or do you leave it blank? Um, well, here, here, here's, here's the, the answer that I've always been given to that. First of all, I, I've done a lot of home inspections um, myself just when the lawsuit hits and I have to go and, and look at it and take photos. And I've never been to a, to a house that's been resold where I can't find at least, you know, 10 things to write down about it. Um, and I've been told by most home inspectors that even on a new construction house, they can come in and fill an avid form uh, to the brim with things that they find wrong with it. So um, what does that do for you guys? It, it does this. I, if you go into a house that looks clean, look harder <laughs> and try to find something. And, and you may not find anything that's real glaring. Um, but if it looks clean, maybe that's because it's been recently repainted. So basic, you know, maybe you want to write that down and say, you know, house looks like it's been uh, repainted. Um, you know, house looks like it's been recently refreshed. You know, buyer has been uh, has been advised to ask seller questions about whether the new paint is covering anything up. Um, something like that. I mean, there, there's almost always something that you can put down on the AVID form to prove that you did your job. Cool. Uh, Eric? Yes. Okay. Uh, you're in a uh, dual agency situation. Okay. Two separate agents, uh, two separate agents in the salespeople in the office. Okay. Uh, the one agent puts down the general thing. The other agent uh, goes through and says you've got hairline cracks that could be a structural thing people back out for that issue what do, what happens there if the seller all said all of a sudden says you've uh, you've impaired the value of my property by stating something that you're not an expert in yeah that, that and that's that's obviously the the fine line uh, that you got to walk because every time you do something like that um, you're going to have a seller who is is going to you know want to disclose less and not want to make their property look like it's worse than it is. Um, so I, the the way that we've always told everybody to deal with that is when you take the listing, you know that's a good time and most most agents do do their visual inspection at the time they take the listing um, and take a look at it and and try to try to figure out you know what the areas of disclosure are going to be and talk with your seller about it um, so that they don't get uh, broadsided by this issue when the when the avid is filled out and say you know you've got some cracks you know, in the ceiling um, do you know what you know do you know what those are, are caused by because you know if, if we don't know what's causing it it's best to disclose it to the buyer and to point them in the direction of a structural engineer or a contractor or something like that because if we don't and it turns out to be something bad um, you're going to pay for it later on down the road. So if you can if you can address those things early on with the seller and get the seller on your side about certain things, um, and convince them that more disclosure and more pointing in the direction of the appropriate uh, professionals is the right thing to do, it, it may ease things for you. Uh, you know, as you're going along. Um, I think what you're not saying is that sellers typically uh, conceal things. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh, out of five lawsuits uh, we've had in the last ten years, there've been two sellers concealing, right? I uh, think so. We're supposed to go from a sticky window to the floor has been leveled, but the seller doesn't disclose that. That's well, that's the tie you're trying. You're, you're try that's the jump you're trying to make. Yeah. The, well, the, the the jump that I'm that I'm trying to make is um, obviously 
you know, whenever you're trying to sell anything, you want to make it as enticing as is possible for the, you know, the, the pool of, of prospective buyers that are out there. So as a seller, that's what you're trying to do. I mean, you know, if, you, if you're watching Curb Appeal or any of these, you know, HGTV shows uh, that are telling you do this, do that, you know, spend five thousand dollars here, you get fifty thousand dollars more for your property, blah 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 blah. That's all fine and dandy, but if you're if you're covering things up that are problematic, um, that's not going to do you any good down the road. You might get you know slightly more money for your property, but it's going to be a, a bigger problem when your buyer finds out that you covered something up. And if you can discuss those issues with your seller up front and say we've got some things that we that we you know that we should disclose, and here's the way I'd like to disclose them so that we don't have problems down the road after the close of escrow. That would be the way that I would try to address it. Yeah, you, you've had your hand up for a while, so <laughs> go ahead. Are we looking as a representing a buyer? Are we looking for faults in the property, or or are we looking to just notate the uh, our observation of the characteristics of the room as we go through it? And and th this is. Um, you know, it, it is a it is a considered uh, question because it needs consideration when we as agents go through a property. We have maybe two additional opportunities to actually go through the property two times more than a buyer does. A seller's agent has a lot more opportunity, but as a buyer's agent in real life, we have maybe <clears throat> two opportunities. The other couple of times we go through are during the inspection as well as the showing. Um, and so the, we are making, as far as I'm concerned, we need to make observations, not necessarily look for faults to call out to either the buyer or the seller, but considered observations. And so therefore, should I put on my cabin in the, in the room, do I put, I observed, and that's what I put down? Or do I say, here are the faults I have found? Which one of those is what I'm putting down? Well, if, if you look at the way that the code is written, it doesn't say that you're looking for defects or faults or whatever. It says that you're looking for material facts that would affect the value or desirability of the property. So it really does go beyond like what you were saying as problems with the property. Um, as to really anything that you would observe that you would believe, you know, in your professional opinion, is going to affect uh, the desirability of the property or the value of the property for the potential buyer. So it is. It is specifically for us to call out faults, not to observe the the property itself, just to call out faults. Well, what, how are you drawing the distinction between just observing well, the property then, and um, observing the property is is uh, making uh, observe statements about what we see in the property. <coughs> Uh, that there is carpeting on the floor as opposed to wood. That there is uh, a, diff a tile on the on the uh, kitchen counter as opposed to any other material. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think you really need to do that. I, I don't think you need to disclose that there's you know carpet on the floor because that's something that a buyer can can see for themselves. Um, and and and, and a lot of a lot of this stuff buyers can see for themselves as well. So so hang on, hang on one second. Don't don't light the pitchforks uh, or light the torches and get the pitchforks just yet. Um, because I know you're going to say, but the buyer can see all the same stuff that we can see. And here's where the courts draw the distinction: is they say, you know what, you and the buyer may look at exactly the same thing, and the buyer may consider it to be a non-issue because it's the first time they've ever bought a piece of property or the second time they've ever bought a piece of property, but you, as a real estate agent, may have more ideas about what that is and what the possible ramifications of that are because you've done it more and you have more expertise. So a buyer who may look at a, a stain in the ceiling and say, it's a stain in the ceiling. Okay, so I don't know, maybe I gotta go buy a few roof tiles and I'll paint over it and it'll be fine. Um, that's what a buyer might think by looking at the same thing that you're looking at. But what a court or a standard of care expert might accuse you of is saying, ah, but as a real estate agent, you know that a stain on a ceiling means that there's been water intrusion. And water intrusion, as everybody knows that's been in real estate, can 